Well, thanks for visiting on this site. Um, we're looking at a new idea at the moment of doing some book reviews, um, particularly focusing on the Second World War, possibly trying to kind of comparison, if we can, with the end times which we in ministry believe we are living in. And the book I've chosen to launch this uh, idea is The Real Odessa. You can see it up on the stand there. Excellent book written by an Argentinian investigative journalist by the name of Uki Goni. I hope I pronounced his name right. But basically he touches on the well-known rat run which the Vatican uh, set up just at the end of the war and some think they set up as early as 1943 to obtain passports for many of the escaping top Nazis who were fleeing Europe going to a new land and of course the land was Argentina and he's looked into the details of the way the Peron government, there is there, the general, General Peron, was able to work very closely with the Vatican. Peron was a great admirer of Adolf Hitler as well as uh, Pope Pius XII and uh, I think he felt that as the Third Reich was crumbling in Europe, many of its brains and scientists and doctors and so forth could be recruited to come to Argentina to see the birth of the Fourth Reich. Awful thought. But I just want to look briefly at the idea of this rat run and we're calling this little video, we're calling this the Vatican Rats because the rat run was set up by the Vatican Rats, men such as Cardinal Siri, Pope Pius XII, Bishop Hudel, you notice the German connection here, Monsignor Krauss, Monsignor Montini, Cardinal Tisserand and so forth. All of these men through their offices were able to help many of the escaping Nazis to flee from Germany to Argentina. He highlights many of the top Nazis in here, not only the Nazis as well, he looks at some of the French collaborationists, the Belgian Rexis party, which is a fascist party, and the Croatian Ostashi under Pavlic. So there's a great deal of these men, not only German, not only Nazis, who are able to escape to Argentina, men such as um, Klaus Barbie, uh, Adolf Eichmann, um, Dr. Mengele, Sepp Dietrich, all of these people, Otto Skarenci and all of those people you've heard about. I'm just going to show some photographs if I may, perhaps James can go in on some of these photographs, they're, 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 they're quite interesting, some of the photographs that have come from here. Um, here's quite an interesting one that I saw earlier on, if I can come to it. Now, can you go in on that one? Cardinal Antonio Caggiani, second from right, that's the gentleman there. And Bishop Baferia, that's him there. Looks like Laurel and Hardy, doesn't it? One very overweight, one underweight by the looks of it. And they arrived back in Buenos Aires after secret talks at the Vatican. He was the, the Cardinal Archbishop of Buenos Aires, a very powerful man, and he would have been told the plan by Pius XII to bring these people over with the blessings of Pius XII and General Piron. Another little interesting photograph here. There you see Hitler at the top there with his Argentinian born agricultural minister, Richard Walter Dare, there. And this is an interesting Piron picture of the Italian Crown Prince in the Italian Alps, 1940. Probably about the time he went, there's Piron there, he went to meet Adolf Hitler up in the Alps there. Looking like they're having a good time. But this, this picture caught my, my eye here. There we are. Past the 12th, the notorious Belgian Nazi collaborator Pierre Dia was received by Pope Pius XII on the 6th of January 1943 and brought back this Vatican memento of the interview. And you can see it there, Pierre Dare. You can see it there. He was a, a Belgian collaborator who helped the Nazis when they came to his country to load the Jews on the trains to Treblinka and Auschwitz. And there's Peron with the saintly Evita, who everybody's heard about, Eva Peron and so forth. She was very much taken with some of these Nazis, apparently, thought some were wonderful men. But I just want to talk about um, one of them, if I may, and that is Adolf Eichmann. Some more pictures here of some of these men. Some I didn't know any much about, but in their, when their own countries, when they were involved with the um, deportation of the Jews, were very much involved in making sure the whole Nazi apparatus run very, very smoothly. And we've seen this one already. Excellent book. But I just want to talk about one man, if I may, Adolf Eichmann. Now, Adolf Eichmann, party number 45326, is quite an early member of the Nazi party, uh, was born in Germany, 
Um, he looks sort of swarthy complexioned. He looks sort of Eastern European. I think many of his friends in the SS or colleagues, if you call them that, thought he was a little bit of Jewish blood there. I don't think there was, but it certainly looked like it. But his family then moved to Austria, and uh, he had the dubious distinction of going to the same school as Adolf Eichmann. Still stands to that day. They both went to the same school. Um, he was put on the rat run. He got to Argentina. He seemed to have had a menial job there, where some of the others had jobs in very high positions, and even in government, some of them as well, under Peron. But Eichmann was there. Um, eventually, in 1960, he was snatched by Mossad. They'd finally got him, and they brought him back to stand trial for the um, mass deportation of so many Jews from so many countries. He had overseen the uh, deportation of Jews in, in, in Hungary, um, France, uh, and other countries as well. He also went to Palestine in 1939 to negotiate the idea of having the Jews pay to be deported to go there. And there he met the Grand Mufti, who in a letter to a friend wrote, Eichmann is a Jew. But he's an interesting man, very much a, a backroom boy, but very much involved with making sure the whole machine ran very, very smoothly. A little inter couple of interesting stories before I finish this. He married a Catholic girl uh, in the late 30s, had to get permission, of course, from his um, commanding officer. And he says that on the night uh, of their uh, honeymoon, she brought out of a suitcase two Bibles. Very, very interesting. The Catholic has a Bible, even has two Bibles. Very interesting. I was in the Catholic Church for 30 years and none of us ever read a Bible. But he was so sickened with this because to Adolf Eichmann, National Socialism was his religion and Hitler was his Messiah. And he says that he tore the Bible up. I suspect that he bent it back, from, you know, the, 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 the cover of it. Normally it's Moroccan uh, leather and ripped the pages out. She then produced another Bible, again he rips the pages out, and he said, it's absolutely amazed that she sat there and read the Bible with two torn pieces. So it gives you some idea of the anger of the man and his hatred towards Christianity. But he says in his memoirs, when he was taken to stand trial in Tel Aviv, we'll come to that in a minute, he says, we had been brought up to look upon the Jews as the Christ killers. I think those are his words. Yes, kill the Christ killers, we used to shout out, because they so much saw them like that. And whilst he was... Back in Tel Aviv, he stood trial, and much of it's well documented. You can go on YouTube and you can see it. And you can see this man sitting in this glass case, it was bulletproof and everything, in case he was going to be assassinated. Uh, he looks like a bank manager or a school caretaker or something like that, but he reminded me of Monsignor Montini, who later became Pope Paul VI, could have been his brother. He describes this mission through, through Europe, rounding up the Jews, as a terrible dance of death, and it may well have been. It certainly was for those children and women and, and innocent people who were swept along to be taken to Treblinka and Auschwitz. He spoke Yiddish, of course, so that was a great help. But he was found guilty, and you can watch the trial. You can see how he defends himself. I, I was just a cog in the wheel. It was nothing to do with me. But he was found guilty and on the 31st of May 1962 he was hung and he was cremated. Quite right too. Most of his victims ended up in the ovens there. Excellent book. It's now in paperback. It gives you the duplicity in the lives of the Roman Catholic Church. The Vatican rat run, run by the rats in the Vatican. Many of these men now will be burning. If you don't get a chance and if you're interested in this period of history, there's the book for you. Let us know what you think, and we're going to have some more of these books in future. If you can think of something, let us know. Until then, thanks very much.